Hey everyone, and welcome to a very exciting edition of our weekly PvP news roundup. With this past weekend's BlizzCon line event, there was a ton of PvP related news that you might have missed, which we'll be covering in this video, including some very exciting news about PvP talents and rewards for Arena in TBC. There's also been a recent build on the PTR with a few more changes that'll be impacting the current PvP season once patch 9.0.5 hits. So without any further delay, let's catch you up on everything that's happened in the past week. To kick things off, on the 24th of February, the PTR received a new build for the upcoming patch, which includes some changes that are going to make a lot of people happy. First, we're finally seeing a nerf to the Ringing Clarity Conduit that's been allowing Rets to one-shot their enemies in a fraction of a second. In the next patch, you'll no longer have to worry about blinking when facing up against a Ret, as they won't be able to proc several judgments at the same time when they use Divine Toll, making their one-shot capabilities a little easier to deal with. Instead, with this change, the initial judgments that Divine Toll applies to everyone around the Ret will no longer be nerfed, but instead, all of the judgments that Ringing Clarity procs on the Ret's main target will be nerfed by 25% and will have a delay in between their hits. Now, this will by no means make the spec bad. Ret is still going to be one of the best melee in the game, capable of taking people out with huge Final Reckoning and Templar's Verdict crits. However, this change definitely takes care of what was considered the most frustrating part of playing against Rets, as there was close to no counterplay for three judgments hitting you at the same time for over half your health. Honestly, it's a little surprising this wasn't dealt with sooner with a hotfix, but at least it's been dealt with now. In exchange though, Rets are receiving a buff to one of their underperforming legendaries in PvE, Final Verdict. While it's currently simming quite low in raid content, it's already a decent pick in PvP as the range on Templar's Verdict is an excellent tool for dealing with classes like mages that can kite you. It also allows Templar's Verdict to be used while disarmed. And with this upcoming damage buff, it's likely that all Rets will want to switch over to using Final Verdict as their primary legendary. So for you Rets that haven't already crafted it, you might want to start hitting up Torghast again to prepare for the next patch. Next, we've got yet another nerf coming to Holy Paladins with their ultimate sacrifice PvP talent taking another hit. While the mitigation on the damage transferred to them was previously removed, the duration of ultimate sacrifice is now being reduced to 6 seconds, down from a massive 12. This change is actually quite significant, as up until now, when a Holy Paladin used ultimate sacrifice, they would have enough time to stabilize their teammates' health without worrying about them being too low when it fades. With this being reduced to 6 seconds, it's going to make the cooldown a much weaker safety net as if you're able to get the Paladin into some form of CC during the ultimate sacrifice, by the time they come out of it, Sack will have faded and they'll have a much harder time keeping up with your pressure. And given how strong Holy Paladins have remained, despite receiving a handful of nerfs, we're glad to see the devs continuing to hand out small yet meaningful nerfs to bring the spec closer to the level of other healers without gutting it too hard. The last news on the PTR that's worth taking a look at is another buff to Demon Armor. On live servers, it's currently set to a 90% increase. The last PTR build brought this up to 120%, and now, in the most recent PTR build, it's been increased yet again, now at 160%. This is definitely a huge change, and one that might bring Warlocks back into the meta at the highest level as the combination of their permaslow legendary and ability to tank melee a little easier could make them a formidable force in the upcoming meta. This change is certainly one to keep your eyes on and maybe start thinking about giving your warlock friends some games. After all, your warlock friends will remember who the real ones were while they were outside the meta. And as if paladins weren't already getting the short end of the nerf stick, we've got yet another one coming, this time to prop paladins. And without a doubt, this one has to be our favorite nerf so far, as Steed of Glory will no longer make prop paladins immune to all forms of CC. There's no denying that this PvP talent was ridiculous and allowed prop paladins to have an extremely forgiving time in Arena, given that they could just immune everything whenever they wanted to. We even saw a prop paladin make it to the top four of the second European Arena World Championship Cup, with this talent being a major contributing factor in that team's success. So with this now gone, we're unlikely to see Prop Paladins continue to do well at a high level in Arena. Now, real quick everyone, before we move on to some exciting news about PvP talents, we'd like to take a moment to talk about Skillcapped, a place you can use to up your game and improve faster than anyone else. For over 10 years, we've pioneered educational content within WoW PvP and have spent all of that time perfecting our craft and consistently working with the absolute best players in the world to bring you the content that you need to keep up with the meta and get ahead of your peers. 
Plus, with the ever-changing landscape of WoW PvP, there's no better time to become a member and stay ahead of the meta with up-to-date PvP guides being released every week for every class. And the best part, you don't have to take our word for it. We have an improvement guarantee of at least 250 rating when actively using skill capped. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. Check us out right after this. All right, next up, we've got some super exciting news from BlizzCon Line, where we've finally been told that PvP talents are finally being refreshed in patch 9.1. We've been stuck with the same old talents since Legion for almost five years, so it's definitely about time these got looked at. While we're certainly not going to receive a much sought after fourth PvP talent slot, there's absolutely a ton of contenders for every class to have some useless PvP talents removed in exchange for a tool the class desperately needs. On screen, you can see a bunch of examples of PvP talents for every class that honestly are never used in highly rated PvP. And these are just a handful of them, with pretty much every spec having a bunch of useless or weak PvP talents that they never pick. So, with this news coming, we'd love to hear from you guys what kind of PvP talents you'd like to see for your class. Maybe you're a rep paladin who wants to get blessed hands back for two charges of bop and freedom. Perhaps you're a rogue that wants to be able to shiv off intervene. Or you might be a warrior that wants to get the old spell reflection back that reflects all spells for a few seconds. Whatever it is, let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see your class get in patch 9.1. Next up, we've got what might be a surprise to many, but definitely something a modern take on WoW needs to see, cross-faction queuing. In an interview with game director Ian Hazakostas, it was stated that we should never say never in reference to seeing Horde and Alliance being able to play together in endgame content, such as raiding and PvP. We've already gotten examples of this in a game with mercenary mode, allowing Horde players to queue up with Alliance players in unrated BGs. So it's definitely something that could happen, and honestly, given the direction the game has been going in recent years, is something that will probably eventually happen. While the original inception of WoW was very centered around Horde versus Alliance combat, the game has been around for almost 17 years now, and it's worth considering whether the design ethos of the past is still a good choice today. For us, we'd really like to see Alliance able to play with Horde, especially as the game ages and starts to have less players. It's important to open up cross-faction gameplay to bring more opportunities for players to find others to play with. Certainly a contested topic, and also something we'd like to hear what the community thinks on. Continuing with another Ian Hazakostas interview, it has been reported that the devs are considering bringing back a Warlords of Draenor style scaling system for PvP gear. This was a very hot topic in the build-up to Shadowlands, with us, alongside several other content creators, posting several videos discussing how PvP gear should be implemented in Shadowlands and beyond, with almost everyone agreeing that a WAD-style scaling system would be great to see again, as it would solve a ton of the issues with gearing, especially in the early season where higher item-level PvE gear is more easily accessible. This is absolutely something that we feel should be a permanent solution to PvP gear in the game, and we're glad to see the devs haven't forgotten about it and hope to see it implemented at some point, if not in Shadowlands, then at least in the next expansion. For those of you that are unaware, essentially PvP gear would have two different eye levels, with a higher item level being scaled to when engaged in PvP combat, making it much more desirable to gear exclusively through PvP. And although this won't have too much of an impact on those who were actively gearing from the start of the season, it's especially good for players gearing up a character later in the season, as it will allow the developers to scale up honor gear to higher item levels than conquest gear, essentially lowering the gap between honor and conquest gear in PvP, while preventing honor gear from being too overpowered at the start of the season in PvE. The last bit of news we'll be taking a look at today is in regards to how the PvP seasons and rewards will be distributed in the upcoming TBC Classic release. First, we already know what the phases in TBC will look like with the different tiers already being grouped together over five phases. What hasn't been determined yet though is whether or not Season 1 will start in Phase 1 or if it will be delayed until Phase 2. During BlizzCon Line, we heard both ideas being presented, so it's clear that internal discussions still need to happen as a decision has not yet been made. As for PvP rewards, some of you might not be aware, but prior to Season 14 in Mists of Pandaria, Rank 1 titles were actually handed out to the top team on each battle group. This was actually implemented in this way because the technology at the time prevented server blades hosted in different locations from allowing players to queue into each other. But as Blizzard improved their hardware, cross-server activities became possible with every realm on each region being connected. 
This resulted in the system changing to rank one titles being distributed to the top 0.01% of players in each region, which is how things work today. And as this modern implementation will carry over to classic TBC, there won't be battle groups, which means that we'll most likely have the same system in place that we see on retail servers, with rank one titles being given out to the highest ranked teams overall. And speaking of teams, TBC will be maintaining the team system that was removed back in season 14. So we'll be left with an approach that stays true to the past with players needing to create an arena team, while the rank one title will then be distributed based on percentage rather than to the number one team. The developers also stated that the number of players allowed in a team won't use the original approach, which only allowed two players in a twos team, three players on a threes team, and five players on a fives team and will instead opt for the way it was eventually changed to, which allowed double the team's amount to be in a team, with four players in a twos team and so on. Overall, we're happy with the direction that TBC Classic is going, and we're excited to see how the PvP community will respond to TBC Arenas. So, are you all going to be participating in TBC and pushing for Gladiator mounts or even rank one titles? Be sure to let us know. While the gameplay itself may leave a lot to be desired, it's certainly going to be a nice change of pace from Shadowlands Arena, and at the end of the day, TBC is a stepping stone to Wrath of the Lich King Arena, which is something we all hope to see one day in Wrath Classic. Alright everyone, that about does it for this weekly PvP news roundup. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and are now caught up on everything you need to know that's happening in the PvP scene. As always, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.